Uh, I have here uh, Pablo Chevreau, uh, who um, uh, ran the winery of Domaine Chevreau in Chénie Marange with his brother, uh, Vincent. And uh, Pablo, you are actually at the moment in your new winery, if I can yes, see. Yes, I am. I am. Background. Yeah, today we have, I could be outside because we have a beautiful day today, but um, yes, I will decide to stay here because it's always noisy outside. So with uh, the yeah. dogs and everything <laughs> and uh, the children's. And uh, so, um, so, yes, I am in uh, my new winery. And uh, so I will present you my work. Uh, I just wanted to check with you. You will have some wine to taste also with you? Yes, yeah, so we, today we're going to taste, uh, so we have the Le Bulle okay. Paul. Um, I thought it would be- Everybody a... does? Sorry? Everybody does uh, have uh, some wine to taste? Uh, not everybody, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, okay. But um, uh, most, of, most of the people, yeah, connected have okay. wine to, to taste. Perfect, um, that's very good. So, um, so yeah, we will we'll, we'll taste the Crémant. I would love you to, to talk about uh, Crémant Bourgogne. Um, I will, I will. To yeah, in the UK, uh, some people don't really know about Crémant and how for the final customer, it will make sense uh, in terms of the buying and then the, um, the yeah, what makes the difference in how, how it's made. Um, there's, and then we're going to taste uh, your two Aligoté mm -hmm. uh, wine. So, uh, Caterroir 2018 and TL 2017, uh, 18, sorry, the new vintage. Um, so, okay. yeah. So, so, just, sorry, just for blue. So, so, just for to come back to Deja Vu wines, my specialty um, is also uh, Bourgogne Aligoté. So uh, Bourgogne Ligoté, uh, Pablo is going to talk about it a bit more when we're going to taste the two um, um, Aligoté wines. And um, uh, it's a lesser known grape variety in Burgundy, um, which is sometimes not really um, well known. And um, so Deja Bu wines is um, Kind of specialized in that kind of in that in that grape variety. So you're going to taste if you're joining another you know, masterclass. You're going to taste different expression of aligoté, and uh, we're going to talk more about that grape variety later on. So it's your, your turn, Pablo. <laughs> okay. So first of all, uh, thank you for being there and uh, sharing this uh, masterclass with uh, with me. So I will present you my uh, domain. So it's a family estate. Uh, it has been uh, created by uh, my grandmother uh, in the 30s, my grandmother and my grandfather, and then uh, my father follow, and uh, me and my brother are the third generation working here. And uh, all our vines are uh, in the south of Côte de Beaune, in the villages of Santenay and villages of Marange. So this is our two main appellations. Uh, we grow uh, uh, 18 different wines, uh, 18 different cuvées in red, in red white, uh, sparkling, uh, and also some rosé. So, yes, uh, in Burgundy, we have the opportunity to have very uh, lots of diversity of uh, condition of soil and appellation, and that's why we make um, so much wine in, such, in a small place. In the, um, yes. So it's 18 different wines for 18.5 hectares. So yes, that's, um, that's uh, important uh, in terms of diversity. And um, so uh, Aligoté, as uh, Lea said, is also one of the speciality of the area. So there is a few places in Burgundy where we, there are still a lot of uh, Aligoté growing because uh, of uh, the soil uh, and the condition which uh, gives good result with the variety. So we have, for example, our, our villages, so uh, from the Marange, but there is also a lot of Aligoté in pernon vergelès in for Côte de Beaune, and in Côte de Nuit, uh, there is a lot of Aligoté on the, in the Fissin and Marsanet area in north of Côte de Nuit. So you can find some also in, you can find it all over Burgundy. Now there is still about uh, three, 
1,500 hectares in, of aligote in Burgundy. And um, um, so there is different uh, uh, type of wine you can make with it. But uh, now uh, with uh, the, yes, um, we can feel there is a, a more interest on Aligoté for, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, is uh, um, uh, going with the global warming and, and climate changing. Uh, the Aligoté have a very nice, um, uh, um, e the production in terms of balance, in terms of quantities, they're very good compared now we struggle a lot from uh, with Chardonnay and Pinot Noir some years to have a balanced wine. And with Aligoté, it seems to be easier. Um, we had uh, three years, uh, three odd years in a row with 18, 19 and 20. And uh, on these three years, um, we have very good uh, production of Aligoté in terms of quality and quantity, which is far, is far from being the case for Pinot and Chardonnay. So this is one of the reasons there is an interest for the winemaker, for, for Aligoté, and also uh, all over Burgundy, but not only, there is um, um, lots of uh, winemaker uh, trying to uh, work with Aligoté um, with uh, no limits, no, the style, there is no very, um, you don't expect something very uh, typical when you will uh, uh, open a bottle of Aligoté. And uh, so it opens uh, to good winemakers and winemakers who want to, to express themselves uh, to make vinification a uh, little less traditional. And uh, it's a good playground. Yeah, because so, there's, a, there's a lot of um, kind of like unsaid rules in like the, the way, um, you know, Chardonnay is um, made and then where it's planted. So with mm -hmm. the Bourgogne Aligoté, you have that uh, liberty to and flexibility to play a bit with the grape variety and then to just experience new things as well. Yes, that's. Um, yeah, well, I won't say there is there is a Burgundy style for Chardonnay. There is a Burgundy style for Pinot Noir, and uh, sometimes it's difficult to go away away from this style. But uh, with Aligoté, um, there is uh, no. Yes, you can you can play and make a different type of wine and also yes, take more risk or go to other vinification, which is um, easier. So um, I uh, propose uh, to begin with uh, maybe the testing uh, with um, I don't know I don't mind what you want. <laughs> Uh, should we, should we, should we, but you talked about the, uh, the Aligoté, so should we try the Aligoté yeah. first? Okay. And then we'll, we'll talk about the Cremant de Bourgogne and the way okay. it's made after. I think that will make sense. Yeah. Okay. So in uh, our estate, uh, we grow um, uh, 1.7 hectares of Aligoté. Uh, we have two cuvées of, uh, with this 1.7 hectares. Uh, so the main one is Aligoté uh, Les Quatre Terroirs, this one. So it's made uh, only with Aligoté. And uh, the particularity is, um, so it's unoaked. So we don't have, um, we, uh, it's only ferment and age in tanks with no oak. And uh, so you will really uh, feel the expression of the Aligoté. So it's uh, from vintage 2018. Uh, 18 yes was very interesting for the for the white. Um, it was a year uh, very uh, hot uh, in the summer, but also very rainy in the spring. And uh, so there, there was a, a good condition for maturation, and uh, it was really interesting uh, for the for the white wine. Personally, I have a, I really love the 18 uh, whites because um, we don't feel at all it was a very hot summer, uh, which is not the case, for example, in Pinot Noir, where in, for the Pinot 18, uh, in the World Burgundy, uh, it's a very hot type vintage, very ripe and uh, with lots of uh, uh, aromas, little, oh, I would say, cook or hot. That won't say it's bad, but uh, 
with the whites, you don't really want this type of a, of a ripe aroma. And uh, in 18, we didn't get them at all. And because uh, yeah, the, there was always water in the soil and uh, this, um, this, uh, this good reserve of water because of the very rainy uh, spring, uh, which we, uh, were very uh, good for, for the white. So I will taste it with you. I'm happy to go back on it because uh, now we are on, uh, we're starting some with, with the 19s and so I, have, I haven't tasted the 18 for a few months. Yeah. But um, Aligote is always very um, um, stable from one year to another. So it's very, uh, you have a, a, yes, a powerful aromas. Um, uh, it's it's uh, lots of expression, but also uh, very, um, so the main fruit is, a, it's a, yes, more citrus, little, uh, little uh, exotic aromas and uh, little also herby, uh, little uh, vegetal, but in very good part. So mm. there's almost like a, a, a creaminess, a yes. tiny bit of creaminess, which is made, um, which is comes from the way um, the, the, the wine stay on the leaves. For uh, not not exactly. So um, in uh, our ligote, we have a uh, two um, two main uh, type of soil. Um, on the so we have a. Um, one plot in gravel soil, uh, which is which will give the length and the rebound of acidity, the nice freshness in the in the finish, and we have uh, three different type of uh, sandstone, and the sandstone uh, so it's very it's yes as we said it's sandy, sandy soils and um, it's um, the sandstone is very dry, and uh, it gives to aligote lots of oiliness more than creaminess so. It tastes oily, uh, and um, the oiliness of the give by the sandstone will balance the big acidity of aligote. It's always uh, low in uh, alcohol, so in 18 it was yes 12 degrees, which is uh, sometimes we can yes between 11.5 and 13, it depends on the vintage, but 12 is perfect. And um, um, also the Interesting thing is the uh, saltiness. So the, um, the sandstone is very rich in uh, magnesium, which gives the saltiness to, the, to this wine. So um, this is a very nice wine uh, because, of, uh, because it's very dry, so you don't have sweet flavors. So um, it's, but it's not uh, sharp because of the oiliness and uh, it pairs very well with uh, um, the shells, uh, so f uh, um, sub, uh, like uh, yes, um, oysters or sea almonds or um, I don't remember how we say palourde. <laughs> uh, clam. Uh, no? Clam, yes, yes. Yeah. And uh, also with crab and uh, yes, cooked seafood like crabs or langoustine, it's very nice. I'm very impressed by the power of the 18 uh, because now we, we start to sell the 18, the 19. So in terms of flavors and shape of the wine, it's very similar, but, uh, but 18 have more power, more strength. Yeah. yeah you have a lot of like um, um, layers of aromas and then it, you feel like it's there's a lot going on in the bottle. Mm -hmm. It's a very long finish as well. Yeah. So now it's perfect to drink it. It's completely open. Pretty good time to drink it. And uh, so we really love Aligote in uh, our place because uh, it's a very digest wine. Um, it's uh, a low alcohol and, um, and um, nice acidity. Uh, it's very refreshing and very good. Um, for this, this type of wine, which not, uh, is not boring, is really, yes, um, 
very uh, the, his freshness is very interesting. Yeah, it's very dynamic, and then it's 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 a, it's a, the that it the, um, uh, translate very well the new Burgundy, I think. Like um, all the new generation of winemakers are trying to make something else, um, and then the Bourgogne Ligoté is is very much a uh, great variety that that new generation is like work together. Um, and you, you part of the Alligator, this is how we, 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 we met and mm -hmm. uh, how uh, Deja Bu has uh, um, decided to specialize in Bougon Alligoté. Les Alligoteurs, um, if you just have like a, a, a quick word on Les Alligoteurs, uh, uh, the... the... Uh, so yes, uh, Les Alligoteurs, it's an association of uh, uh, winemakers uh, which um, trying to preserve and uh, making good wine with their old vines of Aligoté. And uh, so um, this is a, yes, a very uh, dynamic association with lots of good winemakers. And uh, so we are today 60 different winemakers. Uh, so now the, yes, um, I would say it's closed, but uh, um, there is new winemaker every year, but uh, we, sele we select them for them uh, with their with their work and with testing their wines, but um, what is interesting on this association is uh, all the when you go uh, for a testing of alligator, you can see all the the different uh, um, type of wine you can make with alligator. It goes from uh, from um, pet pet nut to orange wine to yes dry regular wine. More, more or less hokey uh, with uh, uh, longer aging or even sparkling, um, traditional sparkling like champagne, but made with aligoté. And, um, and uh, it's very, uh, yeah, very, um, uh, I would say, um, exciting. Uh, all the good wine you can taste now with this variety. And um, so uh, we have a lot of fun with uh, all my friends from uh, Alligator. Because uh, yes, everybody wants to make very good thing, but with his own uh, his own uh, way, and uh, and the, the the range of wine is very impressive. The range and the quality of the wine is very impressive today, with Aligoté. Yeah, have a have, have a little. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Aligoté, this one is free. Thank you. But should we test the? Um... Yes. So the, the, the next one, the Tiel. Yes. Um, so about Tiel a bit. So Tiel, uh, Tiel is also um, made with uh, Aligoté. So uh, the idea of this cuvee. Uh, so we work uh, organically in the domain, and uh, and uh, we work with. Uh, we have two horses uh, to plow the vine. So on on the on the domain. Um, so the horse, the our horse, plow five hectares of vine. Um, so, and uh, this cuvee um, of Tiel is uh, on one of the first plots. We start to plow with ho with horse um, because um, the idea was uh, to have very good condition for the soil to make very good grapes with the whole vine. And so, yes, the idea was um, to make an aligoté to age. Uh, because um, so the cuvee Cat Terroir uh, is not fermented in oak, and uh, the oak is very interesting for uh, aging, not for the young wine. It's interesting uh, when the when the wine uh, age, uh, when the oak will bound to the wine, and it gives a very interesting uh, yes the burgundy type uh, for the aging, and so. Um, the TL was, uh, we wanted to make uh, again uh, uh, a cuvee uh, which can be aged 10 to 20 years, like it was the case uh, when uh, for the wine of my father when he, when he used to ferment the wine, the, uh, the aligoté in barrels. Um, once he started to ferment uh, aligoté in tanks, uh, it gives very good wine, but to drink them young, young from one to five years, but after five years, uh, we didn't have the, the type we expect of a whole wine of Burgundy. That's why uh, we, um, we, um, 
we do this cuvee TL. So uh, TL is fermented and aged in oak, but we want to, we want it to go further. So we um, we really work this cuvee like a premier cru. So in terms of viticulture, uh, so in terms of yields, viticulture, work in the vine. So we we um, we go further than the, than the the other cuvee uh, to make be better wines and also in terms of fermentation and aging. And uh, so it comes from the whole vine from the from the 50s. Uh, this vine is on the, on the, um, the underground, the geological bed is a um, sandstone and it's covered with a, with a, um, with a pellicle of gravels. So it's, uh, it's like a a com it's a combination of uh, our best terroir for Aligoté uh, on the same place. And um, so the idea is to, uh, to make a, yes, um, the fermentation uh, take place in barrels for one year. And, and after we keep it uh, for four other months in uh, tanks and bottles with very low SO2, with very, very low sulfur. So compared to the, tea, to the first cuvee, the aromas are much more complex. Uh, can remember, remind some, um, it's, some uh, it's like, um, it's more spicy. You have uh, aromas of, uh, uh, yes, apples and pear, but uh, with um, cinnamon and, uh, and yes, lots of spice. So you have um, lots of oiliness too, very crystalline acidity, um, very crispy crystalline acidity with a very big lens and very good volume. As I'm very proud of this wine. Um, it's um, it's uh, typically the type of a white wine I, I look for today. So uh, white wine with, um, with strength, with uh, power, but uh, with very nice elegant finish and balance and very, very complex aroma. So um, we work a lot on this cuvee and every year and uh, now I think we really reach a very good level uh, of quality and uh, yeah, it's absolutely delicious. Yeah. So um, you can have it with uh, yes, more comp more yes, uh, healthy dishes, I would say like uh, scallops or um, even uh, lobster or a good, uh, uh, I like, uh, I know I know in England there is very nice, uh, comment dit les sols, the flat fish. The sol, the sol, sol. Yes, sol. <laughs> I, I remember I have a beautiful sol uh, in uh, London in the, in St. John's uh, Brasserie, la, uh, Yay. Sanjan bread and, and, and wine, maybe. And uh, there's, you have very good fish. So you, in uh, England, I think uh, you, have, you are very lucky with that. And with uh, very good fish, it's very good, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. The TL. So most of our, um, we uh, are still on the 2017 vintage. So we're finishing up that vintage and then we'll be, um, move on on that new. 18 vintage uh -huh. compared to the 17 um, in terms of like um, okay, can you talk a bit more about like 17 was more like a classic kind of year in, in, in Burgundy 18 was more like warm and uh, can you just just talk to between them um... uh, 17 was a uh, to me uh, I really loved the 70s white and red uh, and uh, 17 whites uh, uh, was uh, they have a good strength. Uh, they have a yes, very nice balance. Uh, they they have a, li a hint of bitterness yet, but uh, that uh, that the, they will age perfectly. Um, uh, I won't say it's hard to me to choose between seventeen of and eighteen. Uh, 
uh, for the whites, it's, very, it's different, I would say. Finally, 18 was uh, hotter than 17, but uh, the balance of the whites uh, in 18, finally, uh, you don't feel at all it was uh, hot, and 17 was a smaller crop, uh, much smaller. And uh, we have a little frost in 17, so in Aligote and, the, and all the Chardonnay were frost, so it was a small quantity. So you, have, you feel the concentration of the smaller quantity because of the frost in the, in the 17. But uh, I really um, love them too. In the domain, we, are, we change a lot uh, between these two years in terms of techniques and technology. Uh, uh, so it's, it's diff different type of... The wine, the wine have changed a lot because uh, we changed a lot of our uh, our style for the white was a year of uh, of changing for us because of the yes the style we want to to go and the uh, equipment uh, we have to to work in the direction we want now and um, I love both of them uh, but um, yes uh, they, 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 they... The, you can see that 18 is more like maybe a bit rounded and then uh, with the, like the, uh, the fact that it was a, a warmer warmer year. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just really, I mean, this is what I said to people, just so the reason, TL is the reason that I fell in love with Aligoté. <laughs> I'm very, very happy to sell your wine, Pablo. <laughs> merci, and, merci. Um, and I hope um, you guys enjoy it as much as, uh, as uh, we do. But now it's bottled for one year and it begin to test perfectly and um, now he's, um, he's back and he's, very, very, he's here for a long time. So if you have, if you have any question um, uh, regarding the two wines that we've just tasted, um, you have a chat box that you can drop your question. And then, or, or if you want to speak or ask a quite, uh, directly a question, because it's, we're not, it's not that many of us, so we can actually have a conversation if, if you, you wish to, to ask uh, uh, something to Pablo uh, specifically. Um, okay. Okay. Um, well, we, maybe we can just move on to the Cremant de Bourgogne then. Yes, okay. So now we move on the Cremant. So um, in my family, we produce some sparkling uh, since a very long time. Even my grandfather started to produce uh, the sparkling. So that's why we call this cuvée Les Bulles de Paul. Paul was uh, my grandfather who created the domain and, uh, and um, uh, one of the first bottles he produced on his own was uh, sparkling, and uh, so we continue this. Uh, my father continue, and we continue. So we have always uh, worked with uh, um, uh, for our sparkling with uh, a base of Pinot Noir. Uh, this is uh, because our soil uh, here uh, grown well the Pinot Noir, so it comes from a, a white marl soil, white uh, white marly soil, and. Um, so uh, it's uh, vintage uh, 2017. So we make uh, we don't blend the vintages. Uh, we make all, always single vintage um, year. So we don't produce Cremant every year. Um, so now um, uh, we still are on 17, um, and we will prepare the 18. Uh, in, we'll start the testing uh, really soon. Uh, so it's made uh, like a champagne, exactly like a champagne. Uh, so the, in the, um, the rules for the, the, for the Cremant are less uh, um, um, restrictive than the champagne, but we, we don't use the Cremant rules to produce our sparkling. We use uh, the sparkling, the champagne. So that means as it's a low, uh, lower, um, the, the difference between uh, Cremant and uh, Champagne, it's uh, for the pressing, you can press stronger the Cremant, but uh, we don't do it uh, because I think it's important um, 
for the quality. So for the Tremont, you can get um, one, uh, 100 liters of uh, juice with 150 kilograms of grapes. But for the Champagne, it's 160 kilograms, so more grapes for the same amount of juice. And um, uh, so we, um, uh, I think it's important to have, especially with Pinot Noir, uh, to, um, to have a good quality, to press very few the grapes. And um, so I was packing, uh, it's made, yes, with only Pinot in 17. I don't uh, put Blanc de Noir uh, because uh, some years I, I will have some hint of aligoté, uh, some very odd years to, uh, because uh, the lower alcohol and the big acidity, natural acidity of aligoté could be interesting for the sparkling wines. So it can happen, we blend 10% yes, of aligoté, but it's not, it's not so often, I'm sorry. And um, so, um, um, you can on the we, we make uh, one year of aging in general, little less. Uh, so uh, we have bottled this wine for the fermentation uh, after one year of aging. So in uh, in July of eighteen, and uh, we make uh, generally uh, one or two uh, decorgements. So this one I've been. Uh, I think we have the same one. So. Yep. In, uh, in March uh, of uh, this year, of 2020? Uh, no, actually it's uh, October 19. October 19, okay. So, uh, so you have even the older ones. But we, we make this one, two, uh, sometimes three, the, the gorgement. Um, and uh, most of the time it's uh, extra brut. So here it's 5.6 gram of, uh, of sugars. We may we will make the last uh, decorgeage uh, next month of the, of the 17th. And um, so yes, the best is to taste. Yes, yeah, so the um, Cremant, I was going to say, it's a, it's a very good, um, it's made like champagne, so you have, because you age it a bit more, uh, you have that um, toastiness and reishiness, which is, yes. um, reminds a bit of like actual, um, um, like when you taste champagne, you have that, uh, those aromas coming through yes. as well. Because it is because of the, the aging in the bottle and then the contact in the meat. Oh yeah, for sparkling there is uh, yes um, two very in, uh, in important things for the quality of us. Three important things: the quality of the grapes and the origin of the grape, of course. But um, yes, the pressing. Uh, so yes, the cuvee is the first juice, and uh, this is really the best to make the wine, and um, and also the time. So time on the lees. And um, so, um, yes, after two years on the lease, you, you, you start to have um, something new, something different in terms of quality of aromas, quality of bubbles. And uh, so, yes, we, we stay on Pinot. So you have this, yes, uh, the, the, yes, the fruit of the Pinot, the creaminess of the Pinot, which is really very, uh, yes, characteristic. But yes, you have the, it's um, compared to Champagne, you have less minority, more because uh, our soul, uh, it's marl, not, not uh, salt like in Champagne. And uh, the marl will give saltiness, will give lots of creaminess, and, uh, but not minority like the Champagne, but you have um, lots of pleasure. It's direct wine, it's very full and um, um, with a good, uh, um, Simpliness. Yes, yeah, so you have like a quite a um, complexity, but it's still very fresh and alive. Um, mm -hmm. It's very refreshing. 
Okay. Uh, I wish I have, a, I have exactly the same as you because me is the next degorgeage, but um, I, I, it's the same wine. So, and um, I think it's even better for you uh, because of the time in bottles. Yeah. And yeah. So this is the thing about sparkling wine is when it's made when the uh, when you have a, a second fermentation in the bottle and the aging in the bottle. Um, they um it can age quite well as well oh yes no problem yes uh, it ages very well we even even if we use very few so2 uh, for our sparking like all our other wine the the aging is very nice um, because of the pressure in the bottles it's it ages very well and the time it stays on the lees also on the bottles and um, there's no problem to age uh, sparking wines mm -hmm. Yeah. And we use uh, the the cork is the uh, uh, jam, but uh, for sparkling and for hygiene, it's very nice. It's uh, working perfectly. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, I always say it's better. Nice crema is better than uh, than uh, than the not so good champagne. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, both in quality and in, in uh, and uh, yeah. No, I mean uh, your cremant uh, is really, really nice. And we we work a lot on the quality of this wine because first of all I love sparklings and I want to to make good ones, and um, and uh, that's true. We we pay lots of attention on all the different steps and uh, viticulture and and pressings and uh, we want to to make really nice quality and I think we. As we reach something very interesting uh, in terms of it's, it's in terms of um, um, quality and and uh, and also it, it identity because it's it's far it's very different from champagne but it has all also lots of qualities and um, it's, a, it's a nice bottle a nice fresh bottle thank you yeah yeah we look through it uh same here if you have any question um uh please feel free to 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 ask uh on the chat box and or if you want to say uh to ask pablo something um about the wines that we tasted um you have you were welcome to to ask merci <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So is that is that your new winery then? Yes. yes. Uh, uh, 2018 was a. Can we have a quick pick? Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, I, will, I will hold. Um, so here it's uh, yes our the new winery for the reds. We, we ferment all the reds, so um, it's built in the this year. So. We were really lucky. So this is the outside. So yes, we have now very, very, very nice equipment um, uh, at the domain to make um, all the QV. And um, yes, you are all invited to come and visit when, uh, when you want. Um, with my brother, we, we build the winery of uh, our dreams. And uh, yes, we are lucky winemakers uh because it's very nice if you want to work precisely with uh low, no sulfur or low sulfur with natural yeast and uh and long aging you need you need lots of good equipment lots of space and to make it well and and easily and uh, now we are we have a uh, yes very nice uh, equipment to to let uh us uh to to give um yes we are not limited by the by the um, buildings and the winery and we can do what we want and it's very that's a good luck i really look, i really look forward to 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 see it uh next yes. time. you're welcome well you're thank welcome. you very much um my pleasure there's a question harry do you want to have your question directly asked to pablo 
Um, okay. Uh, is Aligoté becoming more popular in France also? Uh, I think, yes, it's going... Um, um, we see a changing, uh, yes, in the past years uh, for the interest on Aligoté uh, uh, because uh, yes, the quality is, is there. Um, the price is a little lower than the Chardonnay, which is good also. And uh, um, now, the, yes, we ca I can feel we sell it uh, much more quicker than, uh, than we used to, even in France. And uh, yes, even the, we have a three-star Michelin restaurant next to our village uh, in Chani, called La Meloise, and they work with the Cuvetier very well now also. Uh, and uh, yes, we feel that there is an interest for, for this wine everywhere. Uh, but France was not, finally, it was not the, the first one which have interest uh, for Aligoté because uh, France, uh, French have the ideas of bad wines, but uh, importers doing good job like Lea all over the world um, identify from a long time the good cuvee of Aligoté to import them. And uh, so that's... Um, Yes, uh, the interest in France is uh, it's quite new. But now it's working yes, very well um, in many places. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's a work on the long term, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about um, making people aware of what it is and not what uh, people think, uh, people, what, uh, people think it is. Uh, mm -hmm. The connotation about like, um, the cheap drink and then the acidic wine and then the Kir association mm -hmm. as well. So you need to break, break uh, with this. This, this market of, uh, of uh, acidic, uh, dry and wine still exists for the Kir. Uh, it's not dead, but uh, it's, yeah. Now there is two speeds, so two. But this, uh, this, this, wine, this type of... Uh, this market is still existing, but this one is not going well. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I think we have um, uh, a 15 minutes or so 10, 10, 15 minutes break to everyone before okay. um, uh, Florence, uh, who, um, with whom we're going to test another Aligoté mm -hmm. um, to continue with. Well, thank you very much, Pablo. For You're welcome. Uh, for being Bye, everybody. Thank you. And um, yes, the, please on the if you have any question, I'll uh, I'll relay the question to Pablo at some point, and uh, and uh, and hopefully we'll continue to to drink your wine uh, a lot. <laughs> I wish I can visit you in Bristol one day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, so see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pablo. Bye-bye.